All right then, my friends. So we have made now this Node and Express API, which communicates with MongoDB locally on our computer. Now, when it comes to a production application, your app won't be communicating with your local MongoDB service, but instead with a MongoDB server online. And one way to do that is to use something called MongoDB Atlas which is a database as a service platform. And it allows you to set up a free tier cloud database really easily that you can just then hook up to your application in just a few minutes. So the first thing you wanna do is head to mongodb forward slash Atlas and you wanna sign up for a free account. I'll just click on this try free button right here and that's gonna ask you to sign up for an account or sign in with Google, which is what I'm gonna do because I already have an account. So I'm gonna click on that, but sign up this way if you prefer. And then once you've done that, it's eventually gonna bring you to your dashboard where you can create databases. So it's gonna look something like this. So I'm gonna build a database, so let's click on this, and then we get three different options. Now, I'm gonna go with the shared one, which is free right here, so click on create, and it's gonna ask you a few options. So first of all, the cloud provider, which I'm gonna stick with uh, AWS for, and then the region right here. Now, I'm gonna stick with the default, but you can change that if you wish. If you scroll down, you can change the cluster name if you want to as well. I'm gonna stick with the defaults and just create the cluster. Now, when you do that, it's gonna take a few minutes to create that, and it says that down here, but while we do that, you can create a username and a password, and that's gonna be used to connect to your database from the code. Now, I've already created a username and password, and I'll show you that if I go to database access over here, you can see I've got two users, and I'm gonna use this one right here, Yoshi, and I already created a password, which was test123. So you can add that username by filling in those form fields a minute ago, and then clicking add, or you can go to database access and you could add a new database user right here and you can create it here, okay? So you need to do that. Also, you need to go to network access and you need to allow access to the database from our computer basically or some other network. So I'm gonna add IP address and then I'm just gonna say allow access from anywhere. Now you can add your current IP address if you want to, which will give you access from your computer. I'm gonna allow access from anywhere for now, but make sure that when you go into production that you don't allow access from anywhere, otherwise anyone can access the database and do what they want with it. So let's not do that in production. Let's just do this for testing. So I'm gonna confirm this and that's just gonna take a second as well. And then if you go back to database, then it probably won't have been created just yet. So just hang fire for a couple more minutes. All right then, so when it's created, we can click on this connect button right here to get our connection string. So we want to connect our application, so click on this, and you can see this is the connection string right here. The only thing we need to do is replace this with our username that we created, and this with the password. So I'm gonna copy this right here and head back to my code. All right then, so now back inside the DB file, all we need to do is replace this connection string right here with the one we just copied. So let's delete this and paste in this other one. Now, because this is quite long, what I'm gonna do is create a new variable up here called URI, and I'm gonna set that equal to this string like so, and then I can just pop the URI variable in here, and that looks a bit better. So that's all we need to do in our code, except we need to also add the username and password right here. So I'm gonna use Yoshi, which was the username I created, and the password was test1234. And by the way, don't try connecting to mine because by the time you watch this tutorial, this is not gonna exist, all right? So I'm gonna save that now, and now we're gonna try making requests to this database from Postman. Okay then, so in Postman, we don't actually have to change any of these requests because we're still making requests to localhost, which is where our Node API is running. It's just that in our Node API now, we're communicating with the MongoDB Atlas instead of a local installation of MongoDB. However, if I do try to make a request to get all books, then obviously we won't get any back because we don't have any books stored inside the MongoDB database online. However, we can create them. So let's open up a post request that we had saved before. And if we go to the body, we already have all of this book data that we used last time. So I'm gonna make a post request to add this book. So let me send this and see if we get a response. And we can see now we get an inserted ID and acknowledged is true. So hopefully, fingers crossed, this has worked. If I go to this request now to get all the books, hopefully we should see that one book come back, which we do. So that has worked. 
Now, what I'm going to do is add another book over here. I'm just going to change this to the Way of Kings. I'll keep all the rest the same. Just for simplicity, I'm going to click Send, and we can see that's been added as well. And now if we try to get all books again, this time hopefully we'll see two books, the first one and the second one. Awesome. And also in Atlas, if you go to Browse Collections, you're now hopefully going to see a new collection called Books. You can see this right here. And down here we can see the two documents. So that has all worked. So then, now we have our database up and running online with MongoDB Atlas, and that was really, really simple to do. And that, my friends, is unfortunately the end of this MongoDB series. Now, in the future, I will also be making a MERN application playlist to show you how to create a full stack application with MongoDB, Node, Express, and React. And maybe I might even do a few tutorials about MongoDB Realm, which is a feature-rich development platform for building mobile, web, and desktop applications. And it includes services like authentication, serverless functions, a database, and real-time data synchronization. So definitely stay tuned for that. So then my friends, I really, really hope you enjoyed this series and you learned something along the way. If you did, please, please, please don't forget to share, subscribe and like. That really means a lot. And if you want to access all of my YouTube courses without adverts, also get access to premium courses and early access courses as well, you can do at netninja.dev. You can sign up for NetNinja Pro, which is just $9 a month and also half price for the first month with this promo code right here. And for that, like I said, you get access to every course without adverts, without YouTube adverts. You also get access to exclusive courses not found anywhere else. You get access to my premium courses on Udemy and also early access to all of my YouTube courses as well. So the link to this page to sign up is going to be down below. Again, I really hope you enjoyed this series and I'm going to see you in the very next one.